registrar of companies has been appointed by an Accra High Court as the official liquidator of the Ghana Football Association. Jemima Oware is to take custody of all assets of the Ghana Football Association to prevent officials of the football governing body from dissipating it. The court, presided over by Justice Samuel Asiedu, has also placed an injunction on all officials of the football governing body from holding themselves as such. Court correspondent Joseph Akable is joining us shortly with details of the arguments in court but first here's deputy attorney general godfrey dame who says government is on standby begin to begin criminal prosecution of gfa officials implicated in the anas video once cid investigations are completed well, I think the registrar of companies has been mandated by the courts to take control of all the assets of the GFA, and that's a regular step in the process of liquidation of any company at all. Even in a private company, a totally private company, which does not perform any objects which essentially can be described as public, when liquidation proceedings are commenced, the court has the power to make an order appointing the registrar of company to exercise the powers of a liquidator pending the determination of the petition for liquidation. So essentially what it implies is the Registrar General is mandated to take control of the GFA, but not really to manage it, but to exercise control over the assets and to ensure that there is unnecessary disposal of the assets or um, interference with any relevant things in relation to the GFA. Hmm. The court so, made a reference to some seven days, if you could clarify that for us. Seven days is for the Attorney General to execute an undertaking. The rules of court require that when an injunction is to be granted by the court, the court can exercise the discretion to uh, ensure that undertaking is issued by the person in whose favor the injunction has been granted. And in this case, the injunction was granted in favor of the state. So the court was just being fair in circumstances. So the Attorney General or an officer that Attorney General will mandate should execute an undertaking to ensure that in the event that um, I'm just not taking to ensure that the proper thing is done in circumstances. What's the way forward for the AG's department in terms of the quest to have the GFA liquidated? Yeah, so we continue with the, with the, with the processes for the liquidation. Um, today sets a very remarkable tone in the whole process. The court has appointed the um, register of companies to exercise their powers under the liquidation act. And, and, and to me, it's very significant. It, it, it shows that, well, various issues, serious issues have been raised before the court. And, um, the assets of the GFA can be safeguarded from any unnecessary dissipation. The concern by the lawyer for the GFA is that, I mean, it's in this unusual instance, you are not uh, prosecuting as you've done in other investigations that a journalist has carried out. Uh, are we to understand that you are doing something or you are simply not prosecuting? No, no, not at all. I mean, but you see, but he loses the point. The point is that in the course of this civil action that we have um, filed, we can actually take steps to ensure the allegations of crime are, are dealt with by the court. So the court has the power to consider the allegations of crime that we have made against the GFA, even in these proceedings. The allegations of crime can be established within the premises of this action. So I think that he has missed the point entirely. But are you, are you undertaking some criminal investigation hoping to prosecute? Oh yes, yes, yes. Criminal investigations indeed have been um, undertaken. President Antichi and other executive committee members report to the Ghana Police Service all the time. They are still conducting their own investigations. So I don't think it is appropriate for uh, as to say that no criminal action whatsoever will be taken against them. So, so, so with the uh, register of companies taking over the assets of the GFA, how does the two-man interim committee function? Well, as I said, the registrar company's power now is not to manage GFA, uh, not to run the daily affairs of the GFA. It is to ensure that the assets of the GFA are not unnecessarily dissipated or disposed of. So that one day we cannot say that one of the members of the GFA who are on the books of the registrar of companies act as the lawful owners of the GFA who go ahead and dispose of the assets. Essentially, they have been restrained from disposing of the, of the assets. So of the companies is to ensure that those assets are preserved and managed until the suit has been um, disposed of. And if the suit is determined in the favor of government, yes, of course, then racial companies will take the office steps to then dispose of the assets in accordance with law. My colleague Joseph Akablay joins me in the studio now. Good afternoon to you, Joseph. Good afternoon, Aisha. Let's start with the case that was presented in court today. Um, so what we need to understand first is that, I mean, this was the second time the GFA officials were making an appearance in court. The previous time, 
uh, when the 10-day injunction was secured, it was an ex parte motion, uh, which meant that they were not required to be present in court. Uh, so on Monday, they were present in court. They had some more time to respond to the injunction. So today, their lawyers had the opportunity to argue on their behalf. So we can take a look at the arguments made by the Attorney General for the injunction, as well as the arguments made by the Ghana Football Association. Uh, so first, um, the AG's argument was that the GFA has become an obscene emblem of scandal, corruption, and illegal enterprise. And that is the first point made by Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Yabwadami. He went on to say that the GFA has now become an instrument for self-aggrandizement by people who run it to make themselves rich. This is not limited to subscribers and directors, the GFA and the AG. Uh, he asked that the other members of the GFA are also part of it. So uh, maintains the GFA has lost its image. So that's when he made a point that uh, throughout the globe, when he mentioned the GFA now, everyone is aware of what has happened following the uh, ANAS documentary number 12. He goes on to say that a refusal of this application will lead to greater hardship for the state, uh, for which reason he believes that the court ought to have granted the injunction. And uh, like we now know, the court did grant that injunction. He went on to say that the GFA has undermined its existence and therefore, in the interest of protecting national interest, it is the duty of the AG to take urgent measures to stop this. Of course, uh, and I will be looking at the response by the GFA, but tell us, how did the AG um, argue, how well did the AG argue his points uh, to have you know, secured this injunction? Uh, so they had five minutes each. Uh, they were to add extra details that they feel were not captured in the documents uh, before the court that they felt they could point them to. Uh, Godfrey Yebwadami opted to use his five minutes to rather respond to certain issues that Thadio Soria had raised in his written address. And the first was the fact that the GFA is a private company like we all know now. Uh, lawyer Soria had argued that no one has committed a crime. So if you've rushed to court, you are just repeating allegations that are seen in a documentary. Uh, so why do you think the court should give you any hearing mm. uh, but the response Godfrey Dami gave was that I mean uh, this is not something that started today we've attached a commission of inquiry report they've also attached um, the documentary itself and more importantly FIFA has recognized the fact that the GFA cannot perform in its current state that is why the FIFA together with government has put together a two-member team we know that that is led by Dr. Kofi Amwa and Mr. Tia Kenten who used to be with the Ghana Football Association as a technical director so that means that it cannot function so we can also look at uh, the specific responses that Thadio Sorry made in court on behalf of the Ghana, Football, the Ghana Association. Football Association right so um the GFA's response it says what it is not all of GFA's um duty to duties which are discharged are in the public interest GFA's main focus in so far as its duties are concerned is its members so it goes on to say that the gfa's members are private persons who in the exercise of the fundamental rights to associate have come together to promote their common interest lawyer well, sorry went a step further to say that quote the so-called anas video known as documentary number 12 only presents to the public information about the interactions recorded in the edited video but not evidence that the GFA or any of its subscribers, directors and officers are guilty of any corrupt acts. That the petition has no merits and should be accordingly dismissed. So uh, that did not happen. We can look quickly at the conclusion of the judge, uh, Justice. But uh, before we get to at. the judge's conclusion, how did the judge arrive at his decision of actually granting the injunction to the Attorney General? In terms of the reasoning, it will be very difficult to know the um, details of it because he was very brief in his ruling. He only made a point that uh, from all the documents before him, it was pretty much obvious that uh, the GFA has a case to answer. And the second part is that in the event, uh, the case, the winding up case goes in favor of government. If he fails to grant the injunction at this stage, he's wondering how the GFA can compensate government. But he thinks that governments can do that. Uh, so we can look at the brief aspects uh, capturing at that point being made by justice. So Honestly. he says the GFA, uh, the case against GFA is not frivolous. What yeah. do he mean by that? So he's referring to the allegations that have been leveled against the GFA members. He thinks it's something that needs to be looked at and cannot be said that it's not anything of merit that needs to be discarded. 
Okay, so take us through the judgment. Uh, so he granted the injunction restraining all officials of the GFA from holding themselves as such. Now what this means is that any um, function that they used to perform as officials of the GFA, they can no longer perform those functions. Okay, and Justice Kwame Sidhu is the one who granted the injunction. He's the judge who sat on the case. Yes. Mm -hmm. The second bit is that the register of the companies appointed as the official liquidator to take over assets of the Ghana Football Association. Uh, what we are we are getting, the explanation we get we got from the Deputy Attorney General Godfrey Diabwadame is that once the injunction has been granted, they don't want an instance where certain properties or assets or money that belongs to the Ghana Football Association will be dissipated before maybe the court rules in their favor. So what the Registrar General is to do is she wants to take stock of the assets and take custody of it so that no one moves any item belonging to the Ghana Football Association. You spoke with Godfrey Dami, the uh, Deputy Attorney General, and um, uh, I'm sure he's been telling you what happens next after this injunction. So in terms of uh, a major concern that has come up is the bit about criminal prosecution. And he says that the officials of the GFA were captured on that tape. Uh, they are being investigated by the police. The police is here to conclude that investigation. And once the police hand over their findings to them, and there's enough to prosecute, they are going to take and I take that prosecution as expected of them. All right, many thanks to you. Um, Joseph Akable is our man in court. We've been trying to get Martin Pebble, who is a private legal practitioner and who, who also understands the Companies Act. When we get him, we'll try to understand what happens to the GFA after it's been liquidated.